excited about the places we're going to go and yeah it's going to be awesome i'm just petrified but if you want to know how petrified follow our journey on our socials over the next few months so the car for the rally is my Sunbeam Tiger. Uh, a Sunbeam Tiger was a limited production run of like Sunbeam Alpines, which had small engines in them, but they did a limited production run with small block V8s. And this is one of them. They made a few thousand of them. And this is a rally version of it. So it's got a tuned small block V8, like in the Mustang. Um, it's got a Mustang gearbox. The rear axle is the same as it goes on an Aston Martin DB4, DB5, so very strong rear axle, and that's the basis of the car. You'll see it's a very tight fit. Squeezing a small block V8 into a car so small, there's absolutely no clearance all the way around, so it's a little bit hard to work on, so hopefully in the rally, we won't have to work on it. Just start up every night and just drive, you know? Contact with the ground. We've got Pirelli ATR Scorpions. Um, and this is our secret. This is our, our little sort of, um, little advantage, hopefully, using, choosing the Pirellis over anything else because these are proper uh, off-road tires, but they're also good for, for on the tarmac as well when we get back into Europe. Um, coming around the car, you can see like inside, this is the, um, this is the office. It's a little bit compact, but we've got really comfortable Corbo seats in there. And they're, they're reclining, um, they, they're tiltable, so you can change the angles and dangles um, because we are doing like 500 miles a day for 33 days. Um, we've got the navigation, we've got all the fuses and everything in there. So um, hopefully that is gonna be a nice place to be for a long time sitting there with my wife in case it gets a bit loud which it does over the rough roads go along at 70 or 80 mile an hour on the rough roads person to person communication testing testing coming through do you want to see me get again right elegantly <laughs> oh how was that and then i have to put on my things and we got Four and harness seat belts, full safety devices, roll cage, all welded in. Oh, this is what I have to do a hundred times a day for seven weeks. No, you'll be in there for like nine hours every day. I sort of got together with this one. That's a dark art. That's a Garmin. And it's definitely a dark art at the moment. This is a Monet which gives my interval times, my interval mileage, and my total times and my total mileage. So that actually is within my mathematical capacity. And from it, I've even managed to calculate the miles per gallon, which I think is quite, quite a good start. But as for this, it's just not happening at the moment. Just not happening. So I've got to go on a course, there. definitely. Just keep going west. Yeah. I mean, this navigation thing, Ooh. <laughs> Let's look in the boot. Oh, yeah. Obviously we've got two spare tyres because, you know, puncher, hopefully we won't get any punctures. We've got two spare tyres and we might even put some tyres in the odd place where we're stopping, like Baku when we get into um, Azerbaijan. Um, maybe just fresh set of boots when we get there. Um, inside here, um, because it's a small block V8, it's probably only doing about 10, 15 to the gallon. Um, so we've got a 100 litre ATL safety tank, and that's a foam filled copper race tank. Um, all the pumps are here. I've got a big filter there because we're not quite sure of the quality of the fuel as we go through these various countries. There could be water in there, it could be bad quality, it could be dirty. So I've got a big diesel filter um, on top of the pumps there that will pick up all the muck and um, quick detachable, empty all the shit out. Um, and this is where we'll be putting our, our tent, our clothes, um, the spares. Um, already there's a tow rope in there. And we have to take everything that we need for over a month. Seven weeks. Seven weeks. Pretty much. Take it all in the car. And I've been told I'm allowed two t-shirts, 
three pairs of knickers, one pair of shorts, one pair of trousers, and a pair of trainers. That includes the knickers you're wearing. <laughs> So, so, so I've never done that before. So that's a new experience as well. Mind you, he hasn't heard his list, which is like one t-shirt, one pair of shorts, and one of everything. Well, but he more. actually will. Well, he one won't pair actually of underpants. notice the difference. Yeah. Um, we might strap the tent. Might strap the tent on top here, or bedroll or something like that. And then we've also got, like we've been told to take shovels and, and sandboards in case we get stuck. Shovels. Tools. Tools. Yeah. Not that I'm going to be using any of those. The suspension, it, it, it's, it's proper rally, Olin's dampers. They are the exhaust system. Obviously, it's there to suit the big engine, um, but that's all skidded underneath, so the, no stones take the exhaust system off. It's got a big sump guard. Come around here. They won't be taking us down the tarmac roads. They'll be taking us down the little tracks. Um, underneath there, you've got the sump guard. Um, which goes under 25% of the car. All things like the installation of the engine, they've got heavy duty uh, uh, special engine mounts through to, like even the alternator, like the alternator. Well, you won't get a Sunbeam Tiger alternator in the middle of Kazakhstan. So I picked a really popular one and that's actually off a Citroen C1, which is like a Toyota Igo or a Peugeot 106. And I thought they're going to be more common in, in Kazakhstan and Azerbaijan than, than anything else. So gear it all up so we can just do a quick change with, with an alternator that's available. Um, and that applies to a few bits and pieces. The electrics, a standard coil, like try to keep everything generic and easily replaceable and not too specialized. It has to be period modifications. Uh, if any, yeah, you can't start putting on special racing dampers, okay. you know, with, with twin canisters. Um, you can't put on bigger brakes than they had as standard. Right. You know, I'd love to have disc brakes all around, but you know, they didn't have those in period. You can't put those on now. You can't put different wheels on. You've got to have those, the wheels that, that basically the size that it came with. Um, this is a bit of a modification I put on for this because you know all rally cars that you see in the desert have these because that gives a positive airflow to the inside of the car out of the dust stream, out of the dirt. So, so that has vents underneath and that lets air into the car, pressurizes the inside of the car and pushes any dust that might be wanting to come in out. So you'll notice those on a lot of WRC cars when they're doing very just your rallies. Get the clean air up there. Hopefully it'll be clean. Hopefully I won't be following somebody else. We, we've, we've been out in the fields with it, testing in the fields, if it's gonna be muddy at all. Um, we've been in the rain up to Birmingham, we've been to Scotland in it. Um, there's nothing really like going through the Gobi Desert in the UK.